Guys, I had somebody bring up a question in the live feed this morning, and they asked the difference between a Warrencliffe, a Warrencliffe, uh, I'm sorry, Warrencliffe, and a uh, Sheep's Foot. And I kind of touched on it. Um, in the 1820s, I believe, there was the Earl of, I, I did a quick, just to refresh my memory. There was a guy named, he was the Earl of Warrencliffe. And uh, he was talking with some friends and they were sitting around and they were talking about uh, spring knives, which as far as I can come up with is like a slip joint knife or like a friction folder like we've got these days with the, with the back spring. And they were talking about there's been no real innovation. And uh, so Earl, the Earl of Warrencliffe was involved with a knife making company in Sheffield and with some partners, they came up with a design for a folding knife blade that they called the Warrencliffe blade. And so it was really similar to what was available already, which was called a lamb's foot and there was a sheep's foot and there were kind of just variations of that. But it all dates back, it all goes back to a, a Viking design um, that the, North, the Northmen had uh, that they called the Saax or the Sax. And it was pretty parallel and then it came down to a steep angle down to the tip. And it, what it gave you was a good tip, nice flat surface, robust blade. So I talk about it later, but this is the one that I helped my friend Jason turn from a sheep's foot into a sax. And as you can see, it makes a really steep transition as opposed to a sheep's foot. So they got to thinking about it and that's when they came up with the design. And I, I drew them here. So this is a, this is a warning. That's a sheep foot and that's a lamb's foot. And I didn't do a real great job. The lamb's foot comes down at an angle and then comes off to a rounded tip. Sheep's foot, as you can see, comes down and then just rounds over. And a Warrencliffe has, instead of staying parallel, like a sheep's foot does, prime example, stays parallel for a while and then drops down to a rounded point. That's a sheep's foot. Lamb's foot was a little bit different. It came down at an angle and then dropped off to a point. And then the Warney was a little bit different because what the Warrencliffe does is it starts a gentle taper towards the tip from all the way. It's just one constant radius down. So... There's your differences, but then there's been variations on it. There's been variations on it. There's ones called a coping and things like that. But like the cleaver. So if you look at a cleaver, what you're getting with a cleaver is more like the beginnings of a sheep's foot and then that steep angle like a sax. So there's been a lot of different things that have changed and been done in the knife world. But this is more akin to a sheep's foot than it is to a true warning because like i said the warning makes this you can see it i drew it i drew it here instead of staying parallel like the sheep's foot it just comes all the way down and meets up at the point so this whole debate like sheep's foot warning cleaver well i mean they're all kind of like innovations on things they're they're all still pretty much they get you the same end result they get you a nice flat edge this just doesn't happen to have as acute of a piercing point as, say, a, a true warning. You can see there's, there's a good bit of difference there. So that's where that all comes from. And the name Warrencliffe was taken after the Earl of Warrencliffe. And if you read it, his name was John something, but he was the first Earl of Warrencliffe. So there we are. That's just the history of Warrencliffe. This was just a quick video I wanted to put up. I didn't... Um, didn't want to get into it too much, but like I said, there was there's a little lesser known one called the lamb's foot, where you can see it comes down and then reaches a point and then drops drops over. I just, this is exaggerated, but these are all blade designs that that are pretty much they're pretty similar. They're all real similar, and like I said, they were already making. You can't say that this was the first time that this knife design was made. That the Warren you know, Warrencliffe, uh, the Earl Warrencliffe came up with a new design because I get if you look there's been knives like this that have been made for a long time he's the first day, person that put a name to it um if, if you look a say a sax or a sax is very very similar to this um because of the way it comes down to an acute point and all basically all you're doing with with this is just knocking that that point off of a sax so as a matter of fact my friend uh Jason we turned his um, sheep's foot blade into a sax uh, 
yes, uh, last Friday. Uh, we just ground it down. So, I mean, there's just, there's a lot of stuff out there that, there's information out there. It doesn't take, I already knew the story. I just wanted to touch, touch myself up on it. But there's some interesting history that's out there um, as far as knives. Like uh, one of the other ones, the, the truest friction folder I've got is that um, Higunokami. And if you read, that one is still made out close to where my in-laws live by the one guy that's left in the guild. Now, there are a lot of people that sell a knife that's a lot like a Higo, and they call them Higos. But the the thing is, you can't call any knife that's not made by that guy a Higo no Kami, because Higo no Kami was um, the name of the prefecture's like lord in charge and things like that. And basically, you can only call it a Higo no Kami if you're a member of that guild, and there's only one person left. So there's a lot of interesting stuff in history, uh, even in knives, swords, sword designs, names, and the way things were done. So I just thought this would be a fun, quick video. Guys, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. And if you guys are interested, check this out. The intro music you saw at the very beginning of this, I did myself. That is music that I composed and did for my own intro. And it wasn't easy, I just had some time, couldn't sleep. I was playing around in the GarageBand app and I made my own intro music. So guys, take it easy. I don't want this to be a long video. This isn't gonna be like a 15 minute video. I will talk to y'all later. Take it easy and I'll see you next time.